Welcome to Ratio Scale Modeling. This is part three of Revolve's F4U1A Crosshair Scale 1 to 32. In this part, I'm going to be placing the fuselage together and um, beginning the paint work on the main fuselage. So let's jump into this and see how well I get on. So I'm going to begin with assembling the engine. There's a couple of parts uh, to this, just assembling the first part here. The location points are fairly well defined and they're easy to put together. Before I fit the next part, the prop shaft has to go in. Now if you want your propeller moving, you won't cement this part onto it, you'll just place in the shaft. Once that's in, then it's just a case of looking at it to make sure that you know exactly how it's going to go because this part can be a little bit confusing what's um, the proper way around. I took a little bit of studying to to get it. The location points weren't too good on this uh, particular section so there was a little bit of jigging around just to make sure everything fitted. And then I'm dry fitting this um, secondary ring here. Uh, again with the um, other part it was um, a little bit difficult to uh, try and line up to make sure everything was on the contact point. This is why dry fitting is essential uh, in most cases, just like um, here. But once I was happy with the fitting cemented in position, I was then able to do the back part of the engine. Um, this lined up okay actually. The, the location points are small but there's many of them and so it's quite easy to hold the unit in place. And once they were dry and uh, dry fitted once more, I was able to uh, put a little bit of cement on and do the uh, main fitting of the, the two halves. As you can see there, I'm just putting on a tiny amount of cement on each contact point. Um, as I said in the previous uh, part that I fed, the contact points are quite small in this section but there is a lot of them for it to hold. Again, it's important to uh, get everything lined up properly, so uh, dry fit always. And while everything's drying, I'm going to go on to the wheels. And for the centre part, it's 91 steel that I'm using to paint with. And for the tyres themselves, I'm using Life Colour Black Rubber Shades Tyre Black for these. Uh, I also use the same combination of colours for the rear wheel as well. Before I fit the fuselage together, I have to assemble the rear wheel. This uh, just simply places on the uh, main structure there. The, the um, location point for the drive shaft is a little bit tight, so um, you may want to open it up slightly, uh, which I did. On the rear wheel assembly, the grab wire has to go on the, the, the hook thing. This sits on its own little bracket and um, you don't have to cement this in place, so just squeeze it on. That way you can uh, maneuver the hook up and down depending on how you wish to display your kit. And then it was time to uh, place this inside the fuselage. The location point is very small for this. Um, you don't need any cement though, it is on a, a shaft, but again it can be tight so you may have to open it up. As you can see there, it just dropped out. Uh, I did open up the hole a little bit, just so that I could get the pin to set in properly. After a couple of passes, I was able to get it fitted. Remember, there's no cement in here because the uh, wheel will move up and down depending on uh, the display. Once the rear wheel was in, I was then able to place in the actual cockpit itself. The, the little guiding bars inside the cockpit uh, do line up quite well. Um, it was uh, a nice little guide to uh, place this cockpit in. Sometimes these guides are, are way out and you, you have to jig it around. This one just fits straight in. Um, just had to hold it for a second until the, the cement took and that was it. I will say though, I left it the cockpit um, only semi-dry before I fit the fuselages together. That's just to give me um, sort of movement room when I'm placing the fuselage together. Um, it can be difficult to line these things up. So if you've got a little bit of movement, uh, it does help just to pry everything into place. 
So as you can see there, the alignment of the fridge lug is going quite well. I'm just going to clamp it as I go along and cement it obviously also. And once I've cemented one section, I'll just work my way down and uh, squeeze each part of the fuselage together until it sets. Just working my way down to the last section now, just getting things uh, lined up. As you can see, I've already taken the clamps off the tail end and just applied new clamps now to the front part of the fuselage. And once I've satisfied everything was dry, it's time to do uh, sand down the seams. The seams weren't prominent really, it was just a light sanding needing doing. I started painting the underside of the fuselage, and this is a paint mix of Rebel Aquacolor 374 Grey 80% and 301 White Silk 20%. Now, the instructions are calling for an off white colour here, but I've had some of this paint left over and it's a very close match, so I've decided to use uh, this colour mix. And which I think is a really nice colour mix uh, anyway, for, for an off white colour to a very light grey. Onto the props and the base colours, I've got a colour 15 yellow. Now obviously only the tip of this will be showing yellow, but it's wise to just paint the whole blade that way, you're not going to get any um, uneven paint when the black goes on. So now I'm turning my attention to the landing gear. So first of all, I have to make up the struts. These are fairly, fairly simple to make up. There's two arms that go on either side of the main strut and they connect together to, to form the connecting area. Now once it goes on to the wing. For the wheels, place uh, one half on the initial uh, axle first of all and then that has a little cap that goes on to it. Now, depending again whether you would like this uh, to be fruit moving or not, is, uh, will, will dictate how much cement that you're going to be using. Mine's are going to be free moving, so I'm using the tiniest amount of cement just to hold it in, in place. The cap then goes on the inside part of the wheel and just gets uh, pushed in. I can then place on the second half of the wheel and that's all there is to making up the use strut. I'm painting the underside of the wings and it's 57 grey and that's about 70% and the 56 blue is um, roughly 30% 30, 30 or it could be um, 80 to uh, 20 depending on your, your mixture and what uh, level of blue that you wish. And this is the same colour for the side part of the fuselage and tail. Now, after this paint dried, I thought it was a little bit too dark. So I do go over and change it to a lighter mixture. So there's more of a, a light blue than um, a, a normal blue that you see here. So uh, the engine cowl is getting painted in the same uh, paint. So the uh, light grey colour and the light blue colour. So as you can see, I started changing the colour because the other one was too blue and I've changed it to 76 light grey 80% and 301 white silk 20% and I feel this tone of colour is much more representative uh, in the photographs that I've been looking at instead of a, a more blue colour. For the upper wings and top half of the fuselage I'm using Humbrol's RC411 diesel blue. Now, the instructions are calling for a mixture of paint, but I really didn't want to mix any more paint. So after going through some colour charts, I decided the diesel blue was the uh, closest colour match that I had without mixing the, the paint. Personally, I think the colour match went re really well. Um, the only problem with mixing paints is you're never sure that you have enough so you always mix far too much and then you're left with excess that you probably won't use again. And so I've just finished painting this up and I'll end the video here. So if you haven't done so already, why don't you check out the channel for my other builds. If you subscribe to the channel, make sure you hit that notification bell. That way you'll keep, be kept up to date not only with this build, but all my future builds as well of course. Don't forget to hit that like button 
leave a comment and of course you can share the video. But for now, thank you all very much for watching. Bye bye.